Well, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the second University of Illinois Town Hall series hosted by our University of Illinois Alumni Association. My name is Josh Whitman. Uh, some of you may know me, but I'm a, a two-time graduate of our university with degrees in finance and law. I'm a, a former football player, and, and I now have the great pleasure of uh, just starting my fifth year as the athletic director here in Champaign-Urbana. Uh, very honored to, to host this event and following in the, the big footsteps of our president, Dr. Tim Colleen, and hope that uh, I can offer a few insights into our athletic program and look forward to, uh, to answering your, your questions as we get into the discussion this evening. Uh, as a reminder, if, if you do have questions or comments, I think you're able to hit star three on your keypad and, uh, and follow the prompts uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get to your questions as we can. Um, but a lot of, of exciting and, and notable things going on with the athletic program. Uh, I thought I might start out just realizing that uh, different people probably on the line with different levels of, of understanding or, or awareness of, of our athletic program. thought I might give you just a, a quick overview of Illinois athletics. Uh, here at, at the University of Illinois, we sponsor 21 sports uh, at the Division I level, 11 women's sports, 10 men's sports. We are uh, proud founding members of the Big Ten Conference, which now, uh, of course, has 14 schools uh, and uh, continue to be uh, very proud members of uh, one of the great long-standing tradition rich conferences in, in college athletics. Uh, we have 500 student athletes participating in our program. Uh, of those 500 athletes, approximately 300 or 400 of them are receiving uh, the equivalent of 258.5 full scholarships that's been divvied out amongst them. Uh, those scholarships collectively uh, cost the athletic program over $13 million a year. We, uh, we actually pay what I would call off-the-rack prices, in-state, out-of-state, international, uh, to our student-athletes uh, for their, uh, their tuition to the various uh, colleges in which they're enrolled here on our campus. makes us one of, if not the largest, scholarship providers on, on the U of I campus, and we're very, very proud of that. Uh, on the business side, we have more than 300 staff members with uh, a full spectrum of specialties, including marketing, fundraising, event management, facilities, business operations, compliance, uh, on down the list. Uh, last year, our, in terms of our budget, uh, we brought in just uh, shy of $115 million in revenue. I think it's important uh, to note that none of those dollars come from state of Illinois allocated funds. In fact, our, our revenues come from a variety of sources, but uh, our three largest revenue sources are our ticket sales, uh, our donations and, and private gifts, and then third, uh, our largest revenue source now is distributions from our conference, the Big Ten, uh, which are derived from media rights fees, uh, monies that we receive from our bowl game partnerships and distributions from the Big Ten's football championship game, the, the men's basketball tournament, and, uh, and the NCAA basketball tournament. Uh, as, as you think about the, the athletic program, uh, we have a very simple mission statement, and it's four words, unify, develop, inspire, achieve. And uh, in our vernacular, our mission statement is our purpose. And, and so more specifically, we intend to try and create an experience for our student athletes that changes their lives, that, that prepares them for whatever will come next after their time on our campus is over. Uh, along the way, we, we intend to field championship caliber athletic teams, and, and we want to create an experience for our fans, for our alumni, for our community that brings people together, enriches their lives, and, and hopefully connects them to our university. As, uh, although a, a, a big part of what our student athletes do certainly involves their competitive pursuits, and, and that's probably the part that receives the most public attention, I think it's, it's important that we note at the outset that they are unquestionably uh, taking full advantage of the opportunity they have here to receive an education from one of the great universities in the world. Each spring, we graduate um, over 100 student athletes with, with University of Illinois degrees. And, uh, and in the fall, I thought it was a great example of the academic commitment that our student athletes show. They posted a combined GPA of 3.24, which was one of the highest GPAs on record for our student athletes. It was the 19th consecutive semester that our student athletes have posted a combined GPA over 3.0, and about two thirds of our student athletes earn a GPA of a 3.0 or above. And, and in fact, in the fall, we had 34 of them earning a perfect 4.0. Um, 
as we turn our attention here, I might want to remind folks just to, again, in terms of the prompt and how to access, if you have questions or comments, feel free to hit star three on your, on your keypad. Um, you know, when I was hired in the spring of 2016, I, I tried to stress to the public, to our fans, our staff, our students, that, that we really wanted to build a, a program with a strong foundation. As those of you who know, who have followed our program for some time, you know that we've been to the top of the mountain. We've just struggled at different points in time to stay there. We've been to the Rose Bowl. We've been to the Sugar Bowl. We've been to the Final Four. Uh, but particularly in football and men's basketball, it's, it's been a little bit of, a, of an up and down ride. And uh, as we entered our tenure here, it was important to me that, that we build something with a strong base that ultimately would be sustainable and, and allow us to endure at a high level. And, and when we did that, uh, we really focused on this year. We felt like the 2019-2020 year would would be the opportunity that, that we needed to turn the corner in, in those two highest profile sports of, of football, men's basketball. And the good news is I think that we've we've done that. Uh, football returned to a postseason bowl game for the first time in five years. Uh, one thing that I, I think is worth noting, if, if you haven't uh, – heard about this yet we we do have a, an exciting opportunity we announced this last year to, to go play a football game in ireland uh, our football team was selected uh, to play the university of nebraska in in the air lingus classic which will be held in dublin ireland in august of 2021 our, our advanced team just got back from spending four days over in dublin and came back raving about what that experience would mean not just for our student athletes but for our fans and for our alumni uh, and so I'd encourage you, if you, if you haven't already, to, to check out that on our website, Illini2Ireland.com, with the, the, the number two. Uh, but a uh, great opportunity for us to, to go across the, the pond and, and share the, um, the orange and blue with some, some people in the Irish culture. Uh, on the basketball side, as you may have seen today, our, our team is now ranked number 23 in the country. Uh, we remain in contention as we enter the last week of the regular season. To, uh, to still try and capture the, the Big Ten championship, and, and we're poised to earn our first bid to the NCAA tournament since 2013. Uh, in light of all that success, today we're really proud to announce that we've reached a, an agreement to extend Coach Underwood's contract. His original deal when we brought him on board in 2017 was for six years, uh, and uh, this extended him out by three years to 2026. Uh, really pleased with the, the leadership that he's provided. We also are doing extensions for his staff, uh, excited about the, the upward trajectory of, of men's basketball and wanted to be sure that uh, we, we brought some stability to that to that program and looking forward to the, the great future that they have. Uh, I think it's notable. I, I'm just really thankful to, to our fans, to our donors who have remained steadfast with us through some, some challenging times. Uh, and I'm, I'm so excited now to share in some of these successes and to have the smiles and to see the energy around our events and, and the positive support that's, that's outpouring for our student athletes. I hope some of you are familiar with the Join the Fight uh, campaign. We launched that uh, about a year ago. It's been on billboards all over the state, on television, on the radio, online. Uh, really a campaign that's meant to be a, a call to action, a rallying cry. We want people to participate in, in supporting our program, whether it's for buying tickets, making donations to our, our iFund, or, or something as simple as flying a flag or, or wearing an Illinois sweatshirt. We, we need people to be a part of, of what we've undertaken here, and, and we're so grateful to so many of you who have already chosen to do that. Uh, on the ticket side, when you talk about joining the fight, we've had a lot of people who have done that here over the last year. We've exceeded our revenue goal in all of our four ticketed sports, football, men's, women's, basketball, and volleyball. Uh, in men's basketball, our ticket revenue is up uh, over 25% year over year. We've sold out five of our final six home games. It's uh, just incredible excitement. Those of you who were able to be in the building with us yesterday for the game against Indiana, one of the, the great atmospheres that I've seen in that building, we striped it with the orange and blue uh, and just a, a great testament to our fans. I had one of our, uh, our sports information people said, you know, in order for this to happen in the NBA, you'd have to give everybody a T-shirt uh, and for our fans to – to show up the way they did and, and to coordinate themselves, it really made for an eye-opening experience, for, I think, for everybody who was there. On, on the fundraising side, uh, our development staff has just done a, a fantastic job. As most of you know, we're in the midst of a, of a capital campaign uh, here at the University of Illinois, the With Illinois campaign. 
Uh, the, the overall all goal for our campus is $2.25 billion with a B. Uh, the athletic program has been asked to raise $300 million of that total, and uh, thus far we're about 80% of the way toward our goal with uh, around two years left to go in the campaign. So incredibly proud of, of that progress and excited about the, the generosity that so many people have, have shown. Uh, just in the last two fiscal years, as an example, we've succeeded in bringing in over $80 million in, in gifts and pledges and uh, again, very humbled uh, by the, the willingness of people to step forward with such generosity to support our student athletes. We've uh, announced four lead naming gifts here over the last several years for, for various facilities projects, and uh, and our annual fund annual fund is now is now growing. Uh, I mentioned that $13 million tuition bill. We use our annual fund each year to offset as much of that as as we can. It wasn't too long ago that our annual fund, which we call the I Fund. Uh, actually covered the entire scholarship cost for all of our student athletes, but as costs have gone up, the I fund hasn't been able to keep pace. And so uh, we have a goal now to uh, increase to 10,000 donors to, to the I fund for around 5,000 now. So we've, we've, we want to try and double that over the next two years. Uh, to give you some comparison, Purdue has around 10,000 donors to their annual fund. Indiana has around 15,000. And so we've got some work to do. Uh, and we're going to challenge people to to step forward and, and support our student athletes. I think it's a great opportunity for us to to rally around the work being done by the young men and women wearing our uniform and uh, providing great pride for for our institution. A uh, big focus of ours here in these first few years of my tenure has been our facilities. Uh, over the last two years alone, we've we've opened or announced plans for facilities in football, soccer, men's and women's track and field, men's and women's basketball, baseball, softball men's and women's golf, all those were, were things that were, uh, were were time, and we needed to provide those resources to support uh, our student athletes, our coaches. Uh, the one big project that's still out there, the one that I'd, I'd love to get off the ground, I get asked about it every time I speak in public, uh, is the addition of Division One hockey here at the University of Illinois. This is um, uh, would be the first new Division One sport that we've added here in, in over 20 years. Uh, what I've learned is that Hockey is a, is a big deal here in the state of Illinois, up in Chicago in particular, down in the St. Louis region. Uh, we have the sixth highest youth hockey participation rate of any state in the country. And, and uh, it's not just quantity, but it's quality as well. We have the fourth most Division I hockey players coming out of the state of Illinois of any state in the country, but we have zero Division I hockey programs. And so we think there's a great opportunity there for us to fill that void. Uh, and for me, I'm, I'm just as excited about what this facility uh, a new multi-purpose downtown arena could mean for our existing sport programs and volleyball, wrestling, men's and women's gymnastics, uh, and also for our student body, uh, which would have access to for all their ice programming in the, in the facility and for our community, especially as the, the father of two young kids, the, the idea of them growing up in and around the ice arena, learning how to skate, learning how to play hockey, and uh, and enjoying all the things that uh, a facility like that would bring, I, I think, would be pretty exciting. Uh, not to mention the the economic benefit it would have for um, for all of Champaign-Urbana and the surrounding communities. Uh, before I conclude the opening statement here, just a, a reminder: if you have questions, comments, uh, I believe that the access point is is star three on your phone, and uh, would love to would love to hear from you. But uh, to wrap up uh, opening comments here, just an incredible time. To, to be a part of our Fighting Illini athletic program. I uh, really believe that our, our future is incredibly bright. Uh, we want to continue to use this athletic program to shine uh, a bright light on all the incredible things that are happening here at our university. I, I really believe that that's one of the big purposes for our athletic program is to, is to use athletics to, to highlight the, the wonderful things that, that are occurring every single day, whether you talk about the new Carl Illinois College of Medicine, that the Discovery Partners Institute, the new Siebel Center for Design, uh, obviously the transformative geese gift to the College of Business, the, the new Illinois Commitment Program. There's so many exciting things underway on our campus, and, and we know that there's innovation and life-changing research that's happening every day from our faculty and our students, and if we can use athletics to, to tell the world about the University of Illinois, then, then we've done our job. So. Uh, again, thanks for uh, for the time tonight and, and look forward to um, answering your questions. So, again, star three on your keypad and uh, uh, look forward to uh, to see what we can what we can do here. Yeah, great. Here we go.
Uh, okay, it looks like we've got a, a call here from Michael. Yes. There you go. Hi, Michael. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Uh, thanks it's for going having this, uh, this call and thanks for the info. I'm curious, uh, such a great year. What can we do to convince AO and Kofi to come back next year? <laughs> That's a great question. And uh, one that I, I think certainly our coaching staff is going to spend a lot of time on. I, I think it's important for us to, to make sure that we're doing what's in the best interest of both IO and Kofi. And so uh, we'll, we'll certainly do our part to make sure that they're making an informed decision. And everybody, uh, of course, has different uh, points in their life where they have to make these big decisions. And we want them to do it with, with their eyes open about what continues to exist for them here on our campus and, and what the opportunities might look like uh, if they were to turn professional. Uh, you know, I, I think that certainly we, we believe in the experience that we're providing them. I think that they'd have another year uh, of physical development, of skill development, uh, and a great opportunity, candidly, to come back in, in, on a team that I think would be uh, very highly rated coming into the preseason. I think there'd be a lot of expectation around the team next year. And um, so you, you just never know what's going to click with, with any individual, what, what might be going on in their personal lives, with their families, with their communities. Um, but uh, we'll certainly do everything we can to make sure that those young men have, have full information and make the best decision for, for their own interest. And, and hopefully that decision lines up with what would be in the university's best interest as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, looks like uh, next question is um, from Ron. Yeah, Josh, um, you may have already answered this, but I just wanted to make sure with the extension for Coach Underwood, we were uh, taking care of our assistants. We we need those recruiters for sure. Thanks for the question. Absolutely, yeah, that was a that was a part of the strategy here. We we it's it's all of the assistant coaches who are on uh, on contract with us. So we're talking about Orlando Antigua, uh, Ron Coleman, Stephen Gentry, and also our strength coach, uh, Adam Fletcher, have all done a fantastic job. And, and so as we put this plan together here over the last month or so, it was important to us that uh, we, we uh, address the, the employment contracts of, of each of those folks. And as you said, they've, they've done a great job uh, recruiting talent to this school, but also developing the talent uh, and honing the culture around our men's basketball program and, and the University of Illinois. They've, they've really bought into this institution and what we represent. And so, uh, as I said in a, a tweet today, we're really excited to be able to keep the band together, and, and uh, they've done a fantastic job. Thanks. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. We're going to answer these three at the same time here about hockey. All right. Looks like we've got a, a couple questions coming up here about hockey. I'll start with uh, Kathy. Or John, maybe it's John. I'm here, Josh. And thanks for addressing hey, hockey John. already. And what my question was going to be was if a marathon is a 26.2 mile race, at what mile marker would you say we are for the start of a <laughs> hockey program? That's a, that's a creative way of asking. Um, you no, know, I've never run a marathon, so I don't know that I have a, a lot of firsthand experience. I can, I can use a football field. That might be a, 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 there you something go. that I'm more familiar with. I, I would say that you know, we're in the red zone for sure. Uh, I think that we're, we're in the red zone. We're getting closer to the goal line. I think every day we, we, we gain a couple inches, maybe even a yard on a good day. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't put a specific number on it, whether it's the, the 15 or the 10 or the 5, but I, I, I will tell you that I think we're in the red zone and we're getting closer every day. That's great. I think the university community is excited about it. The Champaign-Urbana community is excited about it. Central Illinois is excited about it. So thanks much. Thank you, John. And I agree. It's really been uh, impressive to me as I've traveled around the state and talked to different people. There, there clearly is excitement around the prospect of bringing Division One hockey to Champaign. And uh, we're, we're committed to, to doing everything we, we can to make it happen and, and hope to have good news in the, in the not-too-distant future. All right, looks like we're looking at uh, Tanner. Yeah, hey, Mr. Whitman, how you doing? Good, how are you? 
Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. I'm glad I was able to uh, catch you here this evening. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, about uh, what you see for the future of the baseball program, and I wanted to see if you kind of maybe comment more about the um, possible uh, uh, renovation of the stadium or completely construction of the of a new stadium and also the uh, baseball facilities, and I'll just uh, go ahead and uh, uh, listen to my answer. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah, baseball, we're uh, incredibly excited about what has happened with baseball and the direction that our baseball program is headed. Dan Hartlib, our head baseball coach, has has provided exceptional leadership now for many, many years. And uh, as everybody knows, we were back in the NCAA tournament last year. Uh, we're one of the, the top seeds in the Big Ten uh, tournament as well. And, uh, and so we, we have a few different plans related to baseball facilities. Uh, ongoing is the development of the design for the new uh, Atkins Baseball Training Center. It'll be a, an indoor training facility exclusively for use by our baseball program that uh, will we'll really be unrivaled, certainly within our conference, and there will be few facilities like it anywhere in the country. It will be large enough to house an entire infield under under a roof uh, to allow our guys more immediate access to uh, all conditions, training opportunities, be connected to our current clubhouse just adjacent to our, our field. Uh, in terms of the stadium, you know, we don't have plans to do a, a full-scale build or renovation. You know, those those plans would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to $40 million dollars. Um, but we would like to come in and, and make some incremental improvements. Certainly, we're mindful of uh, of the of the bowl itself. We would like to try and do some chair backs. We'd like to uh, to do some things in terms of providing more sense of arrival and presence uh, around baseball. So I, I don't see in the in the near term uh, a new stadium per se. But uh, as we get the indoor facility finished, that'll be our our immediate focus, and then we'll turn some attention and see if we can make some some uh, incremental improvements to the to the uh, field as well. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Julie. Hi. Yeah. Um, I just had a, a quick question. I, you know, I have um, another concern. I've had a career in college health now for over 20 years, and I have taken care of a large number of college athletes. And um, certainly many, many of those had head trauma. And I don't think that uh, you can um, be engaged in any discussion about this without uh, looking at the hard reality of the research on concussion and the long-term sequelae associated with uh, those at injuries. So I'm wondering, um, you know, if you can speak to that and what the university is doing to ensure the safety of these young athletes um, in light of this uh, controversy. Absolutely. I, I think that without question, the health and, and wellness of our student athletes is and, and always will be our, our first and foremost priority. And as you alluded to, uh, there, there is certainly a, a new understanding of uh, of head health, if you will, and, and making sure that we're uh, doing everything we can, A, to, to prevent uh, head injury and, and B, when head injuries do occur, to, that we are uh, treating it appropriately and, and making uh, needed precautions to before we return athletes to play. Uh, and so in, in all those respects, uh, I think the Big Ten has, has really been on the front end. We've we've started to put, for example, uh, third-party observers into the press box at all football games. Um, so they're watching the action with the sole purpose of identifying potential head injuries and uh, if an athlete isn't taking him or herself out of a game, um, making sure that, that somebody on the field is aware and, and is removing that individual from competition for analysis. Um, we, we have a, a very strict protocol around head injuries and, and in particular concussion uh, that, w that we follow diligently with, with all of our student athletes. Um, and, uh, and, and then we're also engaged with some, some different research projects here at our university to try and better understand uh, head injury and, and what are what what's causing some of the the, uh, the trauma and, and how we can try and mitigate it. I think in particular in the, in the sport of football, uh, we're very supportive of, of many of the recent rule changes that have uh, been put in place to try and, and minimize the the rate of head injury. And then uh, we're committed to making sure that our student athletes also have the 
the best and and, and most updated equipment uh, to to try and minimize risk of injury as well. So it, it certainly is a uh, a big topic of, of discussion and, and a major focus of uh, not only our athletic program, but I would say uh, all of our peer athletic programs as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the call. Uh, looks like maybe we've got Brian next. Yeah, it's Brian here, Josh. Thanks a lot for doing this. I appreciate it very much. Um, I had a question about football bowl games, both from a practical and a philosophical point of view. And what I'm talking about is that, and this probably shows my age a little bit, but if a team is 6-6, six and six, for example, uh, I'm trying to see where the the benefit is to, to uh, tell young people, you're 6-6 six and six and we're going bowling. And it, it, it's hard for me to work up the enthusiasm about that part. And I also wonder, from a practical point of view, speaking of injuries and so forth, if if you have a team that happens to be uh, even or, or have a losing record, what the value really is of going to a bowl. And I, I look at the Ireland thing completely different from going to the Lugnut Bowl or the Air Compressor Bowl because I think it's great to get out there and advertise the university and put on a good exhibition. But I, uh, if the bowls bring money into the school, well, that's, I understand that, and maybe that's the entire answer. But outside of the money, I'm kind of curious as to about getting excited about bowls that only exist for one year or that have absolutely no meaning at all. Well, I, I, I think it's all in the eye of the beholder, and, and certainly everything is relative. Uh, and so I, I, I think it's a fair question, but I, I would say that at different stages in, in different programs' progress, different kinds of bowl games have different meanings. And so as an example, I, I think our program is a great example where we hadn't had a postseason opportunity in a number of years uh, for us to – access the postseason to be in a bowl game was a really big deal for the young men in, involved in our program. And I, I think to a person, they would all say that, uh, especially after having they gone. Would. My San question Francisco. has to do with you just keep adding bowl games to the, to the universe of bowl games, then eventually you're going to get to go to bowl game regardless of how you play, right? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I, I, but I don't think it'll be interesting to see if the bowl game environment continues to grow or if we see some retraction. I, I think that, you know, the, the bowl games and to some extent are being driven largely by the television partners um, because many of the games, to your point, don't draw huge crowds. Um, but they do provide, I think, really interesting experiences for our student athletes, a lot of whom have not traveled extensively. And so for the chance for them to go, to a new community to experience new things, I, I think is is very meaningful for them, um, and a, and it certainly does give opportunities for ex extended practice. Uh, it's a great chance for young players to develop uh, during an, an additional 15 or so practices leading up to the game. Um, so there, there are a lot of, of built-in advantages. I, I think things that people can enjoy about the bowl environment, uh, but I do agree that at some point it, it gets it gets watered down to a point where it, it may not be as, as impactful, but I hope at some point in the not too distant future, our program isn't excited about going to a bowl game at six and six, but I will say that this year and, and uh, as we continue to build Illinois football, that the chance to get into the postseason uh, was a big deal and something we, we were happy to celebrate something that our, our young men will remember for the, for the rest of their lives. Um, and, and so I, I, um, I'm a, I'm a proponent of, of the bowl system and, uh, I, I certainly would never sit here and say that it's perfect, but, uh, I think it has a lot of advantages and a lot of benefits for not only our student athletes, but our fans as well. Well, I appreciate your insight. Thanks a lot, Josh. Thank you. Online question here about right here. It's like we've got an online question here. This is from, uh, Courtney. Yeah. Uh, and the question is, how do you see the future of women's sports at the university and growing women's sports in general? Our women's teams are some of our best each year. Uh, I think it's a great question. Uh, really proud 
uh, of our women's sports teams. As I mentioned, we have 11 uh, women's sports programs here at the University of Illinois. Roughly uh, half of our student athletes are female. And it's been exciting to watch them continue to grow and develop. Uh, just a, a couple quick examples. Uh, really thrilled with the, the progress of our volleyball program. They were uh, in the NCAA Final Four uh, just two years ago, the national semifinals up in Minneapolis and, and back in the NCAA tournament again this year. I think it's been really exciting for me to see a, a couple programs, men's, uh, I'm sorry, women's golf and women's tennis have traditionally lagged a little bit behind their men's counterparts in terms of performance. And uh, in these last couple of years, we've started to see those programs start to close the gap, which has been really great uh, watching them. Uh, our women's golf is a, is a wonderful example. They finished ninth in the country last year, the highest finish in program history, and actually uh, in front of our men's program, which was uh, was fantastic. Um, so it, it's it's been wonderful to see, uh, I think, uh, a new collection of, of women's coaches, people who are, are growing up thinking about coaching women. Uh, we've got a, a tremendous group of professionals here working with our women's teams. I think you've seen new investment uh, across the board, especially here in the Big Ten and some of the other major conferences into women's sports uh, as some of the, the dollars have gotten bigger through the conference distributions and uh, in, in the ticket sales, we're able to redistribute some of that money out uh, to the benefit of, of all of our sports programs, and in particular, uh, our women's teams. We have uh, actually a, an entire fund here within athletics uh, that we refer to as the gender equity account. And so we, we have money set aside uh, to, to provide additional benefit to our, our women's teams as we work through the year. So uh, I, I think that Illinois has a, a tremendous future in, in women's sports. Really proud of the past that we've had, but um, We'll continue to invest and, and continue to support our, uh, our our female student athletes and look forward to a, a very bright future from them. Okay, it looks like we've got a question here on the phone from uh, from Glenn. Glenn, are you there? I'm here. Thanks for uh, taking my call, Josh, and thanks for hosting this event. It's been pretty exciting to hear the insights directly from you. Um, the question I had had to do with the new uh, Smith Football Center. I know it's still relatively new, but can you talk to the impact that the uh, new centers had on the, the current players and the staff and then maybe some of the recruits as they've come in? And then I don't know if you offer this. Maybe you do. But do you see a time when you might be able to offer tours of the football center for the uh, alumni and fans? Yeah, thanks for the question. I, I think that to your, your first question, which I think dealt with the current team, I, I really, uh, to be honest, underestimated the immediate impact that that building would have on our, on our student athletes and on our staff. It, it was one of the most inspiring days that I've ever had as a professional to watch them come into the building on the very first day and to see how immediate uh, it, how immediately it changed their demeanor. They, they walked around with their, their head up, their chest out. Uh, there was just real pride uh, in them that, that they didn't have the day before. Uh, and so it was almost like the, the university had reached out with, you know, a proverbial uh, shoulder. It put their hand around their shoulder and said, look, you, you matter to us. Uh, we're excited about your, your progress. We're committed to your development. Um, and and that, that carried through, I think, th th throughout the rest of the season. There just was a different feel around the program, and I think that carries over to the, to the coaches as well. Uh, they want to be a, at a place that's, that's committed to their success. They want to be somewhere that, um, that understands what's necessary to, to succeed at the highest level, and uh, I think by, by putting that building together and getting it done in the time frame that we did, we demonstrated that commitment, and, and that's meant a lot to them. On the recruiting side, there's no question that it, that it's had uh, immediate impact. It's just it's a beautiful space, uh, and and I don't think that. And I've said this in different settings. I don't think that a recruit's going to sit down and and go room by room and say, okay, you know, Illinois weight room is is great, but Purdue's is a little better. But Illinois locker room is better than Purdue's. I don't think they're going space by space, uh, but I do think that they're they're asking sort of the general question. Okay. Did, do they have a great facility or do they not? Um, and, and now we very clearly do. And so we're able to proceed through their evaluation to uh, the next phase of, 
of, of them as they as they take uh, a look at different schools. And so it, it's been a, a tremendous success. I think it, uh, as we have with some of the gifts we've received, I think the Smith Center recalibrated people's expectations around our facilities. That now is the standard that we are striving to meet in, in all these different projects that I mentioned during my opening comments. And uh, that, that's had a very positive impact, not just on our football student athletes, but really on our entire athletic program and everybody who touches it. Um, the last question I think dealt with public tours. I, I do think that as we get settled in the building and we get a little more comfortable um, with what's happening, and it's a little complicated because it is a working building. And uh, for those of you who follow football closely, you know that there aren't a lot of off hours. Um, but to the extent we can find some downtime, I think there, there would be some opportunities to, uh, to take some groups through there. We certainly are doing that on a more regular basis now with, uh, with different groups of donors or alumni. Um, but uh, we may try and broaden that out maybe as we get into the uh, into the summer months. Thank you. I've got a poll question here. Uh, so if, uh, if you wouldn't mind, as uh, you're listening in here, the, the poll question is this. Would you be interested in participating in future town halls to learn more about the University of Illinois? Would you be interested in learning and in, in doing more of these future town halls to learn more about the university? And if you could respond by pressing one for yes or two for no, that would be uh, great information for us to collect. So, uh, take a minute. If I could, uh, 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 please press one for yes, two for no. We'll go, uh, Looking here for the next question, gang. We'll go Joe. All right. Joe, I think, has a question. Joe, are you there? I am. Hey, Josh. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Yeah, my question was around, actually, uh, and I know it has a stigma just because of some of our recent games of, of maybe not the greatest thing in the world, but uh, playing in Chicago, again, for both basketball and baseball, uh, and not necessarily giving away home games, but finding opportunities where it makes sense for the university um, to get back up here uh, on maybe a, a bigger scale level and a, and a good competitive game. Um, wondering if, if that's in the future, if it's something that you guys are, are still looking into. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for the question. I, I, I think absolutely. You know, we'll be back in Chicago at, at some point. I, I'm not going to commit to a, a year or a date, um, but Chicago is obviously in a very important market for us. We've got a lot of connections in the city, a lot of reasons that our basketball team wants to be visible in that city, uh, not the least of which is, is recruiting and the opportunity for our players, many of them to play in front of their hometown fans. Um, so I, I have every expectation we will be back in into Chicago. I, I just don't know exactly when, but I, I think it'll be in the not not too distant future for sure. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Jerry. Jerry. All right. Looks like uh, Jerry with a question. Hi, Josh. This is Jerry down in Tucson, and we don't get a whole lot of Illinois information down here. And uh, my question had to do with uh, last year's football team seemed to have a lot of uh, graduate students and a lot of transfers. Uh, is Coach Lovey still working that market? Well, thanks for the call, and I, I hope uh, I hope your weather in Tucson is is nice. I uh, usually get out there at some point this time of year, but I, I haven't made it quite uh, quite yet this this spring. Um, no. But uh, on the transfer question, yeah, I, I think that that's not going away anytime soon. Certainly for all of college football, and I think that that Lovey and his staff have identified that as a as a great opportunity and a competitive advantage for us to try and access the graduate transfer market. As, as you may know, there's some some discussion happening out there right now around undergraduate transfers that would would provide some yeah. more flexibility to to bring student athletes in from other schools uh, during their undergraduate experience as well. And so uh, we've we've held back a handful of scholarships, uh, and and we'll uh, I think take a look uh, at who's available not just uh, this time of year but also once spring football is over. Inevitably, uh, a number of people put themselves into the portal. Uh, and so I, I think there'll be some, some nice opportunities again. And, and as you said, it was a great, uh, great chance for us last year to, to get some, some very talented players on the roster and, and 
we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to have similar results uh, in the transfer market this year. Okay, looking forward to another bowl game. Thank you. We are too. I've got a got an online question here. Um, where is it? Mason. All right. So this is a, a question from Mason. Uh, what is the process of looking for a head coach, in particular, um, after the hopes of of adding a hockey team? So process for looking for a head coach that, you know, it, it varies a little bit depending on the sport, depending on the circumstance. Uh, if a coach is left of their own volition, you think about a, a Kevin Hamley, for example, who, who of course left to take the position at Stanford. Now that's one circumstance versus a situation where perhaps the, the change is, is coming from, from, from my office. Um, and so you, you need to get a good under, good sense of what the team needs at, at any given moment. And I think that that does change on, depending on time and uh, recent results and the culture that exists within within that team. Um, you know, we'll start to identify candidates often before uh, we've even made a change. I think it's uh, I'm a big believer that you want to have some idea of what's around the corner. Uh, and once you step off that cliff, so to speak, there's no there's no turning back. And so uh, we we try and have a, a good sense of who some viable candidates might be. Uh, what they're, I think it's important too, and, and I talk with other aspiring athletic directors about this, that you, you've got to be really honest with yourself about the quality of your job. I think sometimes you can put yourself into a, a difficult spot if uh, you're, you're trying to make your job out to be something that it's not, I and mean, you've got to be very candid uh, about what some of the challenges might be, what some of the limitations may be, and what you're willing to do as an athletic program to make that position more attractive and what kinds of resources are you willing to commit in terms of salary, staffing, uh, recruitment, facilities, um, and because there's always an opportunity to make things better. Uh, and you need to, you need to work through that analysis on the front end to know what kind of a package you're putting together to try and move somebody. Um, because ultimately most of the time we're going to be trying to unseat someone from some other place and, and bring them to, to our place. Uh, and so you need to know what the, the tools are at your disposal to try and make that happen. Uh, and then as you get into it, I'm, I'm a big believer that you want to move fast, confidentially, and, and, and smart. Uh, and, and basically that means we're not going to sacrifice speed for quality. We're not going to go so fast that we, we end up with, uh, with someone we don't ultimately want. Um, but I also know that in today's world it's hard to keep information quiet and the longer things are left open, uh, the more that information gets inserted into the process, and that just creates unnecessary complication. And so uh, we're going to move quickly. We're going to move confidentially. We've been really proud of the fact that we've been able to get our, our two high-profile searches done um, in, a, in a short period of time with, with, without any real leaks. Um, and, uh, and I think we'd take these same principles and apply them to hockey. Uh, certainly, it's a great opportunity here. Uh, as we've talked about, the, the talent that exists within this state, the chance to be the first head coach in a program's history uh, is, is pretty spectacular. And uh, so it would be, uh, it certainly would, would be an exciting undertaking and, and one that we, we hope we're in a position to, uh, to, to tackle here in the, in the not too distant future. All right, we've got a question from Ken. Ken, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Um, just mainly what it thank you and encourage you on uh and for the programs and the way they've increased um i'm down in south florida now it was a lifetime illinois and uh it's just fun to get out and put on the line eye gear and give us something to cheer about um and thankful for the coaches and the work they put in not this past christmas but the year before when coffee was still a senior i've seen underwood down there at the city of palms tournament that they have for basketball when he was still getting recruited um, so just getting out there and putting in the work was uh, nice to see um, him down there. And then, uh, like I said, just getting out with other groups from Illinois. Every time we go out with me and my wife and we see people from all over the state, you know, down in South Florida that's retired. I'm still working up this way. But anyway, I just appreciate the program. Glad that the strides they've made. Almost went out to California to see the bowl game. Um, like you said, the extra practices they get to put in and uh, – um, exposure of just getting on tv and people getting to see people out there and 
I think that's all exciting, and it's and it's in the right direction. So I just wanted to congratulate you on that. Well, I appreciate the comment very much. So it's been it's been pretty rewarding for all of us involved in the program. We've got, as I mentioned, 300 staff here who are doing unbelievable work, who've been working tirelessly for the last four years to, to start making some of this progress. And I can't say enough good things about the coaches, our staff, and, and certainly our student athletes. It's not always been easy, but everybody stayed the course and believed in the direction we were headed. And um, and so many of you out there have, have done the same thing, and, and I, I really can't underscore that enough, what a difference it's made to be able to walk in to our facilities and to see you out in your orange and blue and to, to be able to travel around the country and put out the flag and people show up. And uh, it's really been humbling to, to see the support that has continued to exist in the face of some adversity and, and uh, how meaningful it's been for, for me now to be able to watch all of us start to enjoy some success. It's uh, this is what it's all about, and uh, so I appreciate the comment. I appreciate the support, and certainly we have every intention of, of continuing on the path that we uh, that we're currently traveling on. So thanks. A call from Bruce. Hey Josh, this is Bruce from up in the Chicago area. One of one of the things that surprised me a, a bit was the participation in the I fund um, compared to other Big Ten schools. Uh, I I can't say enough how great a job you and your team does in in uh, promoting the I fund. I met uh, you and your team up at the uh, Big Ten tournament up in Chicago last year with my son, who actually just decided to come to Illinois after considering Wisconsin, thinking Wisconsin would be a much better athletic experience for him as far as cheering for a team. But there was no better feeling when we were on the field together after beating Wisconsin, and he could not be happier to be at Illinois. So thank you for all you're doing. But my question, I guess, is uh, what's your strategy on um, getting higher participation, especially in the Chicago area with so much, so many alumni, uh, uh, Illinois, and uh, is there ways that uh, we, who I'm a I fund uh, um, believer and supporter, even though I'm not an alumni, um, any way we can help promote uh, to get better participation? Absolutely. I I appreciate the call and I'm, so excited to, to hear about your son. That's that's fantastic news. I, I, I think we're going to have this on a podcast. We may have to clip that part up. And when I talk about the impact that, that successful athletics can have on the university, that's a great example. And we talk all the time about as athletics improves, we will see increased applications for admission. We'll see increased uh, quality of the applicants and uh, we hear anecdotally often from people who want to go someplace that has uh, a successful athletic program and who want that to be a part of their undergraduate experience. And so uh, thrilled to hear about your son's choice. And anytime we can beat Wisconsin on the field and, and certainly to steal some, some great uh, aspiring students like your son away, that's, uh, that's all the more better. So uh, appreciate the comment. I, I think on the question, you, you've hit the nail on the head and we, we have to do better. Uh, we, we recognize that uh, as we think about our potential, we have, hundreds of thousands of living alumni from this university. And there, there aren't very many schools that can brag on that point. We have scale in a way that few other schools do. And so if we can just access some small percentage of those people and get them to engage actively with us through the I fund, it could be transformative uh, in terms of the dollars that we could generate and the resources we could provide to our student athletes. Just to give you an example, in Chicago right now, uh, we have, depending on who you're talking to and what the estimate is, somewhere between 175,000 and 200,000 alumni in the Chicagoland area. And right now we have less than 1,700 active iPhone participants from Chicago. Less than 1% of, of our Chicago alumni are active supporters of, of Illinois athletics through the iFund. And so if we can just move that needle a little bit, if we can just double it to 2%, if we can triple it to 3%. And and when you put it in those objective terms, you start talking about 3% of 175,000 people. You know, we're we're not talking about a a huge difference or a a huge increase that would necessitate just a tremendous impact on our program. And so uh, how we're going to do it, we need to be more data-driven. 
uh, with with technology today, we we have an opportunity to learn more about the people who are supporting our program to help us better anticipate who are the folks that are more likely to uh, to invest, uh, and, and we can be more targeted in some of our outreach. Uh, that that certainly has been uh, a focus of ours here over the last year or so. Um, I, I think that word of mouth is critical. Uh, we we really rely on people to to talk about. Uh, their involvement in the I fund and, and to encourage other people to get involved. It's a little challenging for us because we don't have our own graduates other than uh, our student athletes. And I mentioned about a hundred a year. We're not like one of the colleges. We don't turn out uh, thousands of graduates each, each year. And so um, it, it's difficult to, to try and connect to people, uh, new people, especially. Uh, and so we, we do rely heavily on word of mouth. We look for referrals um, and, and we try and, and do as many, uh, large-scale events as we can to, to, to capture people's imaginations and, and get them involved. The good news is, uh, I mentioned some of the numbers, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention that our iFund is, is up almost 50% year over year from where we were a year ago. Uh, and so although the numbers aren't where we want them to be and we have a long way to go, we are seeing some, some meaningful progress. And uh, I, I, again, tip my hat to, to Howard Milton and our, our development team for, for the omens work they're doing and trying to, uh, to move the needle on that number. And, and it seems like we're starting to make some, some good progress. So uh, it, there's no, no substitute for hard work, certainly. And, uh, but we are going to try and, and take a more creative approach and perhaps be a little more targeted in some of our, uh, our outreach efforts uh, using the benefit of, of some of these new technologies. So I, I appreciate the question. And, and again, thrilled, uh, thrilled to have your son on campus. Happy to hear it and tremendous potential. So, and, and I will say this, he doesn't go anywhere without uh, Illinois on his chest. So um, great job Love on it. this town hall. Thank you, Josh. That's great. Thank you. Uh, we've got an online question here. Going to read it. This is from Robert. Uh, what is the effect of the state of Illinois budget issues year after year on the Illinois sports programs? Uh I would say that it, it's it's we've been fortunate uh, because it, it's relatively minimal, and the and the reason is something that I mentioned during my opening comments, which is that the athletic program isn't funded with state of Illinois dollars, and so even as the state has has worked through its own challenges on the fiscal front, uh, the athletic program, by virtue of generating our own revenue, whether it's through our membership in the Big Ten, uh, ticket sales, private donations, licensing. Uh, there are a lot of different things that, that generate revenue to support the athletic program. We've been somewhat buffered from some of the, the challenges that the state has faced. Uh, and so in, in that respect, we've, we've been fairly fortunate and able to, to work through it. I would say that's not true uh, necessarily for, for some of our peer institutions across the state. Not every program is in a position to generate revenue the way that ours does, um, whether you're at a, an FCS program, a Division II, Division III program, certainly. But um, we're, we're in a, in a strong position because of our membership in the big 10 and because of, uh, our presence as a, as a football bowl subdivision member of, of the NCAA to, uh, to generate our own, our own revenues. And that gives us some security against some of the state's ups and downs. All right. Looks like uh, we're, we're we're getting close to wrapping up here. We're not quite finished, but if uh, if you're waiting in line to ask your question, please stay on the line. Uh, you'll be able to leave a message with your question or a comment, um, and uh, we'll uh, kind of head down the the home stretch here. All right, Greg. Yes. Hello. How are you, sir? Hello, Greg. Got Hello. a question? Yeah, I was wondering, because you've had a lot of decisions to make, what has been your hardest decision as being the athletic director? Wow, that's, uh, that's, that's a big question. Um, you know, I, I will tell you that a lot, of, a lot of our hardest decisions are things that maybe happen behind the scenes, you know, things that, that we're not at liberty to talk about. And that, uh, but, but there are a lot of, of, of uh, pretty dis discreet things that happen that, that, uh, that I, I'm – proud of the way we've handled. Uh, but in terms of public decisions, I, I think that um, you know, certainly any time that you replace a coaching staff, you know, those are, those are very important, far-reaching decisions. Uh, and I was just 
one of the things I really enjoy about this job is I get a chance to talk to a lot of students. And I, I had a couple of different calls today with students uh, from different schools, actually, who have an interest in getting into college athletics. And they ask a similar question. And I, I, I tried to provide some context to these coaching decisions. It's not just about what's in the best interest of the athletic program. It's you can't help but but think about the the implications of these decisions for the, the people involved. Whether you're talking about the head coach, the assistant coaches, the support staff, all their families. Uh, if, if you're going to make a change in football, as an example, football now has a staff of nearly 50 people, and so if you're going to change out 50 folks, uh, again, their their spouses, their kids, you know that single decision. Uh, has direct impact on literally hundreds of people. Um, and, and that's never something that you want to take lightly, and it's not a responsibility that has ever been lost on me. Uh, and so anytime you see us making changes on the coaching front, whether it's uh, in a sport like football with, with a huge staff or uh, in, in something much smaller, um, the, the, the personal part of that is, is never far from my mind, and uh, those, are, those are very hard decisions to make. Looks like we've got about uh, about three minutes left. So maybe we'll do, try and do maybe two more questions here. Um, okay. Looks like we've got a question from Jim. Yes, how are you? Good, sir. How are you? Very good, and thank you for doing this. This is great. Uh, question Happy about undergraduate transfer rule. I'm a little concerned. I think it's great for the athlete. How is this going to be regulated? I mean, are, are te- teams going to, uh, different schools going to try to, there's not be tampering allowed, I'm sure, but what's the uh, the way that that's going to be defended, uh, you know, in terms of uh, a student athlete being influenced to transfer? What are the regulations it's, going to be on the schools? Yeah, it's a great question and, and one that's, I would say, a developing answer. Uh, certainly there's an understanding that in this new environment, it, it does increase opportunities for Poaching, I think, is, is the term that it is yeah, becoming better. commonly used. And um, and what does that mean uh, in terms of roster stability? How can you build a team if you're having to re-recruit your players every year? Uh, and, and those are all, I think, very real concerns and, and questions that, that we need to answer. I think that you answered it a little bit yourself, and that there, there will, we will have to develop some regulatory environment around it. Um, I, I think that one of the things that's been talked about is are there some – some deadlines, some dates that are set where we can at least say, okay, by if, if your team is constituted in a certain way on date X, then you can have some assurance that that's the way the team's going to look when you when you start the season. Um, so you 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 create some boundaries around when these decisions are being made. Um, I think certainly another important part is making sure that we're doing a good job of educating the student athletes about what their decisions to transfer could mean for them. Uh, what the the opportunity might look like on the other side of the door and uh, what the implications of transferring might be for their eligibility, for their timeline to graduation, um, for some of their their financial situations, depending on uh, what their their scholarship might look like. So uh, it's it's very much a a work in progress, um, but there are a lot of of related issues to the transfer question that are going to require a great deal of time and thought from uh, a number of different people involved in the process. All right. Well, thank you, and good luck. Thank you. All right. I think uh, maybe the the grand finale here. Let's see what we got. How about um, John? Oh. Looks like maybe John, maybe with a question about the marching the line. We're going to see if we can cue that one up here. Hello, Josh. John, are you there? Yeah. Hi, Josh. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, I think this is a, a wonderful way to get uh, word out about Illinois and information. Uh, I'm down in Orlando, Florida, um, but uh, I was fortunate enough when I was in school. Uh, I grew up in Champaign-Urbana. My dad was a professor at Illinois, and and I uh, was lucky enough to be the drum major of the Marching Illini for three years when I was in school. And um, I just wanted to kind of get your take on, I know uh, at different times uh, there's 
some stuff about you know the uh, lovey and and the coaches uh showing their appreciation for the band uh, i just think it uh do they still fall under the athletic association umbrella uh they don't um okay, okay. they they actually are part of the they actually are part of the the school of fine arts um, but we, we have a very, as you would imagine, a very close relationship with the marching Illini, and we provide um, meaningful financial support to their operation. In fact, I, I think at this point we we fund over 50% of their of their overall operating costs. Uh, we support them through some of our partnerships with Nike. Uh, we we provide uh, resources for uniform replacement, for equipment replacement. Uh, we, we provide some uh, support for staff salaries related to the marching Illini. Uh, we fund a lot of their travel expenses, uh, like when we went on the bowl game, for example. Um, you know, that was a, a significant uh, outlay on our, on our behalf. I think that there's, there's just a great relationship between us. Barry Hauser is tremendous, uh, tremendous, tremendous yeah. friend and partner yeah. for the athletic program. And uh, so we're, we're grateful. I, one of my favorite days every year, Barry always invites me to come visit with the marching Illini during one of their early days of training camp. And I, I've, I've always looked forward to that. Uh, and it's just a, a, an opportunity for me to say thanks to them. I, I'm, I'm struck by some of the parallels between their training and their commitments to, to what is put forward every day by our student athletes. Um, and so, you know, we're just, I, it was, it was great for me. One of my favorite stories about the band was to see two, it's two or three years ago, we played at Ohio state. Uh, and the game didn't go very well, and, and it was a torrential downpour. I've been in a lot of football games. This was the hardest rain I've ever seen at a football game, ever. And the band had made the trip and stood out in that rainstorm for three quarters of that football game. And, uh, and so it was really cool for me this year uh, when we had the, the great comeback against Michigan State, the band made the trip to that game as well, and um, they weren't able to sit in the stands and so Michigan State asked them to stand on the sidelines and uh, if they hadn't been standing on the sidelines they wouldn't have been able to be on the field to be a part of the post-game celebration which was just one of the most memorable events of my life and uh, and so it was it was really cool to be able to share that moment with them knowing that they had been there with us through thick and thin literally blue skies and, and torrential rains um, and uh, it's just it's been a great partnership, and, and we're very very um, gracious and grateful to them for uh, for everything that they've uh, that they've meant to the program and continue to mean to the program. Well, I was uh, I came in from the Gary Smith era, who started in '76, who I thought just brought phenomenal changes to the program, including the Illinois was the first uh, school in the Big Ten to have a female drum major in 1977. And I was, uh, when he retired, I, I thought there's nobody could take his place, but uh, Barry Hauser has just been an amazing addition to Illinois. Thank goodness that we saved him from leaving for Ohio State. Uh, and I just want to say uh, that uh, anything you can do to help that program, I think, is uh, uh, just money in the bank for you. Well, I, I appreciate that. I don't know if you saw, but this 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 may count that you know a couple of years ago I, I ran in the sousaphone 5k uh with a tuba around my shoulder for for three point whatever miles and uh, i've still got the the bruises on my shoulder and my pelvis to prove it it was um it was i just i really i love the band and they've been great partners and uh it's it's been fun for us to, to build a relationship so i appreciate the comments my pleasure thank you josh and i look forward to the next call thank you I think that's uh, that's about all the time we've got for tonight. I just want to thank everybody for uh, for participating. I want to encourage you, uh, if you haven't already, to, to join the fight. And there's lots of opportunities. We need you to buy some tickets, buy your gear, be a be a part of this program, engage with your university in some way. Um, pick up uh, pick up the phone and join the iFund. There's a lot of different ways to to get out and, and support our student athletes. And again, it's about what success in athletics can mean for the overall institution here at the University of Illinois. And I uh, appreciate everybody being a part of this and, and really looking forward to the bright future that's ahead. So thanks for spending some time with us and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, at one of our games coming up. Uh, let's have a great finish to the to this winter and a, and a great spring. And uh, go Illini. Thanks, everybody. Take care.